I'm Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. We've gotten a lot of requests after seeing this gourd on Facebook so we decided to go ahead and put this video together for you and this is using a paper technique that I've come up with. So we want to go and show you how we did this. I started with wrapping paper or shipping paper that you get and you can usually find it just about anywhere. I found it from the dollar stores to Walmart. If you go and look in the shipping section, you'll find the brown wrapping paper. And it's a nice thicker paper, so it uh, doesn't get too thin when we're applying other colors and texture to that. So what I did is I like to use it for gourds that I didn't have turn out quite right. This one was a, a gourd that I was working on and I got a crack into it. So the first thing I did is I drilled the bottom of the crack so the crack won't run any further and then I used the gourd glue to go ahead and secure that nice and even. And because we're putting paper on it, I'm not even going to worry about sanding it down or anything like that. And I even had, you know, other stuff underneath it that I didn't want or didn't like. So this is a great thing to do over other projects that you just may not know what to do with. But what is so great is you can create your own paper and own look and own colors for anything you want. So I started with my brown paper and I picked my colors. Now, I know a lot of you like the turquoise color, so I'm gonna to talk to you about what color I did. I did the turquoise paint, and then I used copper metallic, a gold metallic, and a red metallic sponged on that. And we'll get into how to do that, but those are the colors, and then I used the black crayon on top of that. I took my colors together and kind of put them around to see if that makes a nice palette. My darker purple, which is an eggplant, is going to be my base color, so then I want some lighter colors. And yellow, we're not going to use much, just as a great accent color, just really sets everything off. So that's kind of how I just pick out my colors. So we're going to start with our eggplant, and I'm going to just use my old brush, and I'm going to put a little bit of water into it just to make it more pliable on my paper. And I always say I have the most colorful hands in the business because I always get paint everywhere. I heard somebody once say, if you made a mess, you were a great painter. So I must really be a great painter because I love messes. And one thing I didn't explain is how much paper to use. And I'll talk about that in just a minute here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do that amount. You don't want a lot of water. You just make it pliable that you can put it on. And if it's not dark enough, you've got too much water, then just come back in and put a little bit more paint on that. All right, so I am happy with that. Now what I did when I wanted to figure out how much paper I wanted, I kind of set this down in the middle of my brown paper and I kind of lifted it up and I figured how much it took to kind of make that plus a half. So like one and a half times the amount of gourd you have. And you just make extra. It's not a big deal. I'd rather have too much than not enough. That's kind of my rule of thumb. I did a piece about this big for this gourd and I had about two times. I could have made about two of those. So just kind of uh, keep that in mind. So now I'm going to take my uh, sea sponge here and I'm going to wet it but wring it out so it's no water in it whatsoever you can't have any water in there so it's you know nice and dry the biggest mistake people make when they're sponging is they dip right into the paint you pull the paint out and then you pounce up and down you never go into the paint and directly to the paper because then you just have a big glob of paint and that is a technique 
that I've been trying to tell for a long time. If you've watched my videos, you've probably got that. If you do get a little bit of a glob, then come back in with your clean side and kind of pounce that out. So you can kind of come over that and pounce that back out. So we've done, I use a light purple on that, and the purple I used was a, a petunia purple on that one, and then I'm also going to use a metallic purple, which is metallic amethyst in folk art, and the reason I'm going to use that is just to give it that shine, and I usually use my metallic towards the end. So that's something to keep in mind too because it's on the top. I'm going to do a little bit of like a carnation pink here. And I want a kind of a contrasting to give it color. You, the great thing about making your own paper, like I said in the beginning, is you can just come up with any kind or color or anything you want. You don't have to go look for paper. This is kind of a crocus yellow. It's similar to my dandy yellow, dandelion yellow crayon. So I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about that guy. So. Okay, and then the last one that I'm going to be using here is my metallic gold. And this is normally more than I do in my colors. I usually stick to, uh, with this maybe four, I, my basic colors I like a palette of three. Because if you do much more than he, this, I really have a background color and then five colors on top. But much more than that, it's going to start to get muddy. So we don't want to do much more than that. Even if you went four or three, that's just as fine too. So we've got this all done. So what I do at this point is I take it out, set it in the sun, or put it in front of a fan and let it air dry. It doesn't take that long. And then I come in with my varnish. And I'm just going to use a Krylon gloss because I'm also going to use a gloss in my Mod Podge and then just spray this really, really well. And what that's going to do is that paint is going to stay in place. So when you do your Mod Podge, every, all of your paint and everything when it gets wet is going to be uh, in place. And then let that dry really, really well. And then after that, I tore it into sections like that. And then I take them and I'm going to really, really crunch them up. You want to really get them nice and hard. And make sure that you're not wet with your varnish or anything because you don't want this to, to stick together. But this is where you're going to start to get all of your lines from. So it's really important that we do that. So that's what we're going to be able to make our lines with that we're going to color with our crayon. So I'm going to make my Mod Podge and we're going to not make it but use it. Pour it into a little container. Make sure your lid is on good when you roll it. And you roll it you do instead of shaking it so you don't get your bubbles. And then we're going to come back and we're going to tear our paper into sections. And what I do is I put my Mod Podge on and then I also put it onto my paper and then it lays down better. And because we're wanting the wrinkles, we don't have to do this in little tiny sections like we sometimes have to do when we're using our Mod Podge to get it to lay down straight. So we can put these on in bigger sections, but you really want to make sure that you get your ends nice and flat. I have one up over here that I've got to get tucked in. So we want to get him laid down nice and flat. So we're tearing these into sections. Let's 
see if we can hit that with one. And this is a nice and messy project. So we've got that guy all there. And you're going to notice on these, like where we tear it, you can see the brown from the paper. And I like that. I think that just adds to another texture element that we're working with. So I just embrace that and use that. But um, in some of my other Maj Paj ones, I use a little bit more water, but we don't want to use the water with this for a couple of reasons. Uh, we don't want the paper that pliable. We want to keep those ridges. So it's real important to, to keep those nice and, and not lay them down so flat. We don't want to overdo it. And one really neat thing about this process is a lot of times, like this guy right here, he's kind of a ridge because we've got such a big piece of paper, but we're going to use that to our advantage today. And just make sure that you've got everything covered up. I know that I personally have to, a lot of times, go back and fill in some areas that I've missed as I'm working, so that's okay. Now, some of the edges on the side you can use at the top, or if you don't have those, and just cut your piece of paper. I'm going to make this for two tops, so it's nice and straight where we're going to put it on the top. Let's see what I mean here. So we're going to line this up with our top right here. And because the top curves, you're only going to be able to go a little area. Move that guy over a little bit. Before you have to put the next one on. So then we'd have our next rim guy. And your Maj Paj comes in different finishes. You have like your satin and your flat and your different things just like you do your varnishes. So whatever kind of finish you want, you can have that. Okay, so we've almost got him all finished up there. So we go ahead and finish putting all of that on and then let it dry and I'm just not going to take the time to finish that we're almost there let that all dry and once that's nice and dry we're going to use our heat gun and we're going to decide what kind of color would show up well with our purples and the colors that we've used and I am going to try a robin's egg which is kind of a turquoise color as well. I'm going to break my crayon in half and have completely unwrapped it. You could use a pink, like a carnation pink, a dandelion yellow, just whatever you think. A gold would be really, really pretty on this as well. And we're going to heat our crayon up. And I want it big enough that I can heat it without burning my finger. So that's why we're not using a small piece. And you just kind of want to start to get where it is melting and then we're going to apply it over the top of our gourd. The melt, more melted it is, the better that is going to go on. And what you're going to be able to do is pick up those creases that we have created. And see how neat that's really, really starting to turn out. And we're just doing a little bit at a time. But it needs to be a, a contrasting color to the colors that we started with. And I'm getting over here into my ones that we 
have wet. So we don't want to go that far yet. And it's not going to take a whole lot, but it depends on what side size of board you're using, I imagine, too. Make sure your heat gun has a protector around the top of it, or you can brand yourself, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I have an older one that didn't have this plastic part, and that metal would get hot. And I was giving myself circle brands, and it was very painful, so you don't want to do that. Make sure you have one of the newer ones that has the protection on it. And by that, mine was probably 20, 25 years ago, so just make sure that you've got a newer one. And you've almost finished up crayon there. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and take him around the rim, too. Just go ahead and but look at the texture we're getting. Isn't that a lot of fun and how that really adds to it? And I love the, the purple colors that we used with him. Now, because we used Mod Podge to put on the paper, let's go ahead and put Mod Podge over the crayon again to protect the crayon in case that got warm or anything like that as well. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do on this one, I'm going to go ahead and complete it off. On this guy, I just tied a piece of leather or suede around. I put it three times around and tied it and then hot glued a feather under it and put a yellow stone on it. On this one, dropped it here. I have a gold thing that I think I want to put onto the piece and I think I'm going to put a turquoise stone or something like that on. But there's, you know how to embellishment. Just take your stuff that you have and your embellishments that you have and use it to uh, really show off your glory and just really show how beautiful that is and how fun this can be and think of all the projects that you can use this on it ought to be a lot of fun so check out all the other things i'm doing with it on facebook at marine joy gourd creations where we try to post something new up there for you every day if you need any of our products please visit us at marinejoy.com god bless mm -hmm.